Let's talk about nuclear fusion. What is it? It's kind of the opposite of fission. Fission, uh, well, actually fusion is the easiest for one for me to remember. And then once I remember what fusion is, then I can remember what, what fission is. In nuclear fusion, two small nuclei are, are, nuclei are combined together to generate electricity. So you take two small nuclei, such as hydrogen, that has a small nucleus, it only has one proton, you bang two of those together to form helium or some other uh, light element, heavier than, than uh, hydrogen, but you're taking two things, banging them together to create something bigger, and you're getting a lot of energy out of the deal. Notice how steep this uh, binding energy per nucleon is down here. You're, there's a lot greater potential for energy gain in fusion than there is for fission, whereas the difference in, in energy between these two is not that great compared to huge differences over here as you, as you put things together. So the way I remember it is uh, you're fusing two things together. I mean, sometimes I think of it as just as a, a fuse for a firecracker. It brings the flame to the firecracker, bringing it together. I don't know. Think about it however you want to think about it. But um, the curious thing about, uh, about this is that in stars, the, the process of fusion is, is occurring in the, in the very core of the stars, such as our sun. And uh, uh, you're fusing hydrogen to form helium. And that's the source of energy of our sun. And um, then when our sun runs out of hydrogen and it has a core that's made, only made, mostly made out of helium, then it will start fusing helium together to form heavier elements. Then eventually uh, stars get to the point where they can't fuse, depending on the mass of the star, you get up to the, where the region of where iron is. Iron is right near the peak of this binding energy per nucleon. And you get a core of iron inside of a star, and you can't get any energy out of a reaction in, in going to any heavier elements. So you're, you're moving to helium, then to silicon and phosphorus, and other elements you're fusing. Uh, in the interior of the star, as the star gets hotter and hotter in its interior, then you get to the point where there's iron in the core of the star. And no longer is it energetically favorable for you to create a heavier element via fusion. And what happens then is called a supernova explosion, where the whole star uh, tears itself apart. During that explosion, there is enough energy to go around to create some of these heavier elements, zinc and other elements in your body. So it's, it's, um, it is in fact a fact that a star, many stars probably, had to die in order for you to live. You are made of stardust. So fusion, uh, compared with fission, fusion produces more energy and little to no radioactive byproducts. So there's a lot of advantages to fusion. Uh, fusion, as we said before, it powers the sun and other stars. But harnessing that power on the Earth has proved to be quite difficult. There are nuclear reaction, reactors on the Earth right now, but they're all fission reactors. Taking uranium or some other heavy element, splitting it apart to make lighter elements and getting some energy out. Um, so to do the calculation, the uh, initial, so here's, here's a bona fide uh, reaction uh, of two isotopes of hydrogen. This one's called deuterium. It has one proton and one neutron. So it looks like hydrogen, so it's got an extra neutron. And then tritium has still the one proton, so it is hydrogen. It's, a hydro uh, it's an isotope of hydrogen, but it's got two neutrons. And you bang those two together hard enough at a high enough temperature, then what you get is some energy, you get a neutron out of the deal, and you get a helium nucleus. Let's count to make sure that we've preserved the number of nucleons. We started off with one, two protons. 
we ended up with one, two protons. We started off with one, two, three neutrons. We ended up with one, two, three neutrons, with one of the neutrons separating out from the, the helium nucleus. So that's how you, you fuse um, hydrogen to foreign helium. Then at high enough temperature, you have to get even higher than 15 million degrees to fuse helium into heavier elements. Uh, then you can, you can do a process similar to this. What's the mass defect and what's the energy released in this uh, reaction? Well, the initial mass, we've got the deuterium. Its uh, mass is 2.01 atomic mass units, and then the tritium has 3.01. Remember, it's going to be about the number of nucleons will be the atomic mass. And, and so for a total mass of the initial masses of 5.03. Well, what about the products? We've got a helium nucleus uh, with a mass of 4 point something, uh, a neutron for a total mass of 5.01. And you say, well, hang on. If I compare these two, they don't match up between when we started with this reaction and when we ended with this reaction, we lost some mass. Where did it go? And the answer is into energy through Einstein's famous equation. Okay, E equals mc squared. So let's calculate this. Uh, it's effectively a mass defect. You've got the initial mass minus the final mass, and this is how much mass disappears in this reaction. Poof, gone. And that mass gets converted to energy. We could plug this delta m into here and multiply by uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and square that. Or we can use the conversion factor that we worked out in the last chapter, which allows us to convert from mass to energy in million electron volts. Uh, either way, you get uh, that, that, that nuclear reaction gives you 17.6 MeV of energy. And if we want to work out the uh, energy released per nucleon, so we can compare it with the fission reaction with, with uranium-235 that we talked about last, uh, in the last section, then we simply divide by the number of nucleons. How many nucleons do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So we divide this total, 17.6 by five, and we get an energy out of 3.5 MeV per nucleon. Comparing that with the fission reaction that we talked about in the last section, which was 0.9, about 1 MeV per nucleon, we're getting a great deal out of this fusion reaction.